Ukraine faced a serious air defense crisis. The country intercepts 46% of Russian missiles launched over past six months. Compared to the previous half year, Ukrainian air defense has intercepted far fewer Russian missiles, with 46% of missiles shot down over the last six months and 73% over the six months before that. The Wall Street Journal reported this. In the past six months, Ukraine intercepted around 46% of Russian missiles compared with 73% in the preceding six-month period, according to a Wall Street Journal analysis of daily data from the Ukrainian Air Force Command. Last month, the interception rate fell to 30% of missiles. The interception rate for long-range Shahed drones, which are easier to shoot down, fell just one percentage point to 82% in the past six months. It is noted that the deterioration of the effectiveness of Ukrainian air defense comes as Russia is increasing the number of drones and missile attacks, as well as launching more and more weapons that are difficult to down, such as ballistic missiles. In addition, Kyiv is running out of ammunition for the Patriot air defense systems supplied by the West. Over the past six months, Russia has launched about 45% more drones and missiles than in the six months before that. A spokesperson for the Ukrainian Armed Forces explained to the Wall Street Journal that intercepting more attacks leads to the depletion of ammunition stocks and large-scale attacks can overwhelm Ukrainian defenses as air defense systems sometimes do not have time to reload quickly enough. Over the past six months, Russia has fired almost twice as many Shahed attack drones at Ukraine compared to the same period prior to that. Analysts said that the drones are partly used to test air defense systems before launching missiles. Ukrainian Kharkiv is going underground. Schools, hospitals and theaters will be hidden in the depths. In addition to underground schools, underground operating rooms and intensive care facilities at hospitals will appear in Kharkov. Cultural institutions are also going underground. The mayor of the city, Igor Terekov, announced this during the telethon. We are working together with the Ministry of Health to create intensive care and operating rooms underground on the basis of our medical institutions, the mayor said. Terekov also said that the network of underground cultural institutions will continue to expand in Kharkov. According to him, there is a corresponding request from Kharkov residents. We already have institutions that show performances underground and we are scaling up this experience because there is a demand for performances for live communication in a safe space. It is important that cultural life does not stop, the head of Kharkov emphasized. According to Terekov, at the same time the city continues to build underground schools because the potential for opening schools at metro stations has already been exhausted. The first one should open soon. It is designed for 450 students, that is, it will teach 900 children in two shifts. As the mayor assured, there are already no empty places in this school. All are filled. Terekov also promises that students will not be left without attention. Underground universities are in the plans. Russia is systematically firing at Kharkiv with ballistic missiles and kamikaze drones. Recently, glide bombs have also been added. Military observer Roman Svitan believes that the Russians are deliberately terrorizing the civilian population of Kharkiv, taking advantage of the city's proximity to the border. The goal of the aggressor is to psychologically exhaust the Ukrainians. Putin is already prepared for a small operation against NATO frontier states in northeastern Europe. The head of Polish military counterintelligence has warned that Russian President Vladimir Putin is already prepared for a small operation against NATO frontier states in northeastern Europe as the alliance seeks to deter aggression from Moscow while bolstering Ukraine against the ongoing Russian invasion. Putin is certainly already prepared for some mini-operation against one of the Baltic countries. Jaroslav Strozik, who was appointed to lead the Polish military counterintelligence service in March, told the Zinik Gazeta Prana publication. Strozik suggested the Kremlin's revanchist goals have been somewhat checked by the NATO response to its war on Ukraine. What the West is doing together to support Ukraine shows him that in the event of an attack on NATO, the Western response would be even greater, the spy chief said. According to Newsweek, much of the Russian military strength typically arrayed along NATO frontiers has been redeployed to Ukraine, where Moscow's forces have sustained severe casualties for relatively little gain. 
But allied leaders have repeatedly warned that Russia intends to regenerate its military to threaten NATO borders while maintaining and expanding covert and hybrid operations. In this case, more than 90,000 troops from all 32 NATO member states are taking part in exercise Steadfast Defender, of which swift response is a part with drills including air assaults, armor maneuvers and fire support taking place in locations including Estonia, Sweden, Poland, North Macedonia, Romania, Hungary and Moldova. The mission, Swift Response, is being carried out by British-led forces in Estonia as part of NATO's biggest military exercises since the end of the Cold War, ranging from the Baltics to the Balkans. It comes amid an increasingly heated confrontation with Moscow following Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. There has been repeated warnings from the opposing sides, NATO and Moscow, of a potential conflagration. What is unfolding in Estonia are the opening salvos of what a modern conflict between great powers would be like, with the Western alliance making a stand on its eastern flank.